Hi there. Good to see you guys. Gov. Tech. And uh, I saw a video from a, another person. Actually, a couple other videos. Beth. Good to see you. And also, a dude showed me his medical marijuana plants, which is a wonderful coincidence because I just got my medical marijuana card in the state of California. I'm very happy about that. Let me uh, show you. I don't know if it has any personal private information on it, but it's just like a little card with a green, green picture on it. It's much better, man. I'll show it to you without any of the personal information. This is like... Give this guy some marijuana. Green evaluation. So basically I went over to Amoeba Music Record Store and there's a clinic inside. And uh, for me, there's like two kinds of chemicals in marijuana, THC and CBD. I mean, amongst other things, two molecules. And a CBD is like, doesn't get you high. It just is really good for you. And I'm fascinated with it. I, I kind of like, eight, seven years ago or something, I was doing like front flips in this bouncy castle and I landed on the back of my neck. And I've had some soreness more or less in there ever since, which I noticed that for, for a while I was smoking pot and then stretching a lot, but the smoke was just fucking me up. So the oil, I transitioned to oil. And it's amazing. Just put a little bit in like your coffee or uh, something like do some coffee. So I'll show you. I have an oil. It's a CBD oil. So there's like, it's 18 parts CBD, one part THC. And then I just put a drip in uh, the coffee. It's like mixed with echinacea. And, uh, echinacea and ginger. It's pretty good. It's funny, man. You know, for the years and years and years I've made videos back in the day, I never, I talked a lot about smoking pot, but I never did it on camera. I was always like, fuck, the feds think it's illegal. The state thinks it's legal. I don't want to get involved. I don't want to get so popular that the feds come knocking at my door. But now it's like, it's so legal everywhere. I mean, it's like 38 states that have made medical legal or 32 states or something. It's becoming fully recreational legal. And it's so much better than alcohol, especially if you use the oil. A little bit of that oil is like, if you ever have like a glass of wine, that settling feeling, but it doesn't make you stupid and it heightens your senses. Phenomenally healthy. I love it. So, Tech, you're talking about uh, the Pope and the Vatican. Uh, I'm, I'm fascinated with this shit, man, because I was just thinking yesterday, the Pope, I love the Pope, not because he's a Catholic, has nothing, but because he's a fucking genius. That dude has the, the world stage, and he's like an empathic, smart dude. And he came into Congress and gave this speech, like, accept the, the refugees, fix the world, we need to focus on climate change, come together, forget your differences, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. And Boehner, the Speaker of the House, was like crying in the background. And then today he resigned. Boehner resigned. So like he had this like, fucking psychological epiphany with the Pope telling him like be good to people and then he comes in the next day and he's like fuck yeah I'm done with Congress I'm out so he's he's done with Congress in November man the Pope set shit straight and he's the Pope so the Vatican to be honest when it comes to the facts I don't know much about how much money goes to the Vatican. Like you were saying, 60% of the tax money that arrives in the Bank of England and the City of London or whatever it's called goes to the Vatican. I've heard that. I've heard that a bunch of our tax money lands in the Vatican in the United States. And I know like throughout the history of time, the kings of, of England and Europe would pay money to the 
to the church. I'm pretty sure, right? Like they would they would give part of their treasury to the church, and they, the church would support them, and they would support the church, and the church was just insanely wealthy. So I, I'm not sure how that. I see. I I, I get how you have like uh, misgivings about it, like how you're like barely could even like formulate thoughts about it because in one end the pope is a really good human being he, he's actually a, a really great guy and i'm glad he was voted to become the pope is that how they do it they vote him in um but that institution if it's really you know this gaudy financial hole is 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 horrible and Kind of like uh, sick and twisted, like hip, hip, uh, Hippocratic, right? Hippocratic is that the right word? How is it that being a hypocrite and taking the Hippocratic oath, like a doctor takes the Hippocratic oath, does that mean that they're they're swearing to be a hypocrite? I don't think so. I think they're two different words. That's kind of weird. So. I'm not going to hate on the Vatican. I, I've always thought religion is just kind of insane. It's dumb. It's just like it's just like a history lesson. So that's cool. I love the history of religion. You know, I don't know much about it, but from what I know about Jesus and the history of the Christian faith, that dude railed against an empire. He was like third generation empire. You know, the Romans, the Roman Republic fell. And then an empire formed. So this is like where we're at in the United States. We have this republic that I fucking hate. I think the representation is so piss poor. These people do not represent me. I represent myself. You represent yourself. That guy's not going to represent you. He's going to represent himself. So a republic, it's definitely flawed. And I grew up being told, you live in a democracy. And then you'd hear like, actually, it's not a democracy. It's a democratic republic. Like, you know, why do you tell me about in a fucking democracy if it's not a democracy? It's a republic. It's a very different situation. You, you give me this, this feeling like I'm in power because I'm allowed to let someone else control me. Oh, thanks for the power. No, democracy is where you control yourself. And you your word. Popular vote should always win. You don't vote. It's so ridiculous how there's like sectors where... Where one guy that represents 9 million people has more power than the guy that represents 3 million people. It's like, dude, it's two people. They should have equal power. Anyway. So Jesus, you know, like, the Roman Republic basically was overthrown after, what, Julius Caesar, I think? He, he was too too powerful of a, of a politician, and they didn't want that to ever happen again. So they formed this empire, and then there was an emperor. It was basically a dictatorship, and Jesus was born into that and had none of it. Didn't want any of that shit. Fuck the empire. Fuck the emperor. You're your own god. And uh, he went crazy. He did not like that situation, and that's what's so admirable about that guy. And saddingly, they strung him up on a cross to kill him, and then they used the killing mechanism as the worship idol. Like, we're supposed to worship the cross even though it's a fucking murder tool. Ah, it's all stuff I've said before, but it's great to say again. Jeez, Christianity, man? Catholicism? So what's Catholicism? The Cathar? Wasn't the Cathar like a heresy? At, oh, sorry. Cathar like a heresy at some point? Think about a lot about Islam and the value of Islam. Like Islam was like uh, when Muhammad started to kind of see that there was one God. There was this like unified force amongst all religions and people. There was this energy that like he referred to as God or Allah. And so the Islam faith is kind of credited with the. Oh, I was going to say it was credited with the induction of monotheism, but that was more Judaism, is when they started to see one guy. I don't know. Islam was like a very peaceful 
interesting roots, and I, I barely know anything about it. But he like Muhammad was like an, an orphan, or he was like a, he he was an orphan that lived in a tribe, and he was like raised by the tribe, and um, near Mecca. And the Mecca was like a, a hub for all these different religions, the Christians, the Jews. Uh, they would all come and go. I think there were. I don't know. I want to say the wrong thing, but maybe it was like pre-Arab, but it was just like the Bedouins. He was a, he was a Bedouin. Uh, Muhammad was a Bedouin. And there was like uh, some sort of conflict in Mecca. And these, these, some, some group of people like took Mecca over and, and the Bedouins were like forced to escape with their lives. And I think a lot of them were killed. A lot of people were killed and the city was kind of taken over. So Muhammad rallied all these different tribes and just because of his belief in the unification deity that there was this, this unifying force, people believed him. And this small group of people attacked Mecca led by Muhammad and they won and they were like severely outnumbered. But it's like the idea, this is where like the idea of re religious zealous faith makes people holy warriors and stuff like these were the first holy warriors or some of the first holy warriors you know there have probably been holy warriors throughout time where the stronger your belief in something the, the stronger you fight i don't know like the berserkars and in in, in uh, iceland and uh, the northern lands of the vikings they would like they would like do drugs and go into this berserkar frenzy a berserker was like uh because they would wear bear skin so that's how they got the name, and they would just go into battle with bear skin on, so they weren't hindered by armor. And they, but it's thought that they did a lot of drugs beforehand, so so they'd be in this psychotic rage, um, and that was kind of a zealous a zealous thing that made them stronger. But similar to that, like a belief in in a in a faith or religion is almost like a drug in, induction. Like when your mind gets so like focused on a belief, you know, you can bring that on with with all sorts of different. Uh, stimuli, including religion or drugs or math. You know, people that strongly believe in math, good luck trying to prove them otherwise. So these holy warriors led by Muhammad took the city back, outnumbered. They took the city back and everyone in the city was like, oh God, the wrath of the, of the Bedouin, man, they're going to, everyone's, we're done. And Muhammad said, no, no, everyone's everyone's free and he freed everyone and and told them he, he began teaching them about his belief and the unification and people were like awestruck and everyone followed him started to follow him and believe in him as this he was really young too he, he was like i don't know how old he was like 18 or 6 17 20 i don't know how old he was but very young and uh he basically unified all the tribes and uh, that's when the religion began, you know, back then it was more of like a survival mechanism, a movement of peace. So by force, he took the city and then established peace. Time and time again throughout history has that happened. And so he, he's a hero to me, man. I, I, I think that religion has the roots in like the greatest of faiths to be able to, to stem corruption and provide peace. I love Jesus' story, obviously. That's, I'm more familiar with that story. The, who is this? There's Zoroaster. I wish I knew more about the prophets. You know, there's like Zoroaster from the Zoroastrian. And I, all I know is that he like worshiped lightning. I think he went up on a mount, mountain and like stared at the sky, whether or not he was on drugs. I don't know. Well, I guess that was a roundabout way of saying don't hate the game, hate the individual players if you're going to hate anyone. Try not to hate, you know, there's that, uh, uh, that, that, that fucking pharmaceutical company guy that spiked the price of that drug from like $5 a pill to $70 a pill or $700 a pill or something, 5,000% hike. And now everyone was kind of hating on him. And, uh, I look at his picture and I'm just like, oh, you fucking weasel. And like, I want to just hate him and see his life ruined, but I also don't, man. I don't want to, I'm not into vindication like that. 
just, I don't, it's like scratching an itch, like it's scratching a mosquito, but it feels good, but it doesn't really do good. I've noticed though, if I have mosquito bite, and then I like put it on something really hot, and I like kind of burn it, it stops itching. Interesting observation I found. Excuse me. Well, I'm going to start blogging, uh, uh, so doing some writings, and write about some stuff, including, what am I looking at? Oh, Brazil, apparently. The country of Brazil is like on the verge of legalizing all drugs, decriminalizing all drugs, or at least marijuana. They found that putting the, the youth in prison is like a national genocide. God, we're on the bridge of evolution. We're so close to enveloping this higher perspective. We're so close. Can you feel it? It's there, man. It's all around us. I don't know what is the key. What is the unification key? What is it? Is it like a swirling energy that you just need to align your body? And then you start to vibrate at a frequency that causes this reparational vibration throughout humanity, bouncing off the stratosphere, coning through the sun. It has to do with physical posture. I was watching this uh, TED talk and they were saying, yes, your mind affects your body, but your body affects your mind. So before you go into an interview, you know, you see like, you'll see people like this, and this is like a very weak position. And then you see people like this, and this is a very strong position. Like when people win or, or something, their, their chin goes up and their arms go out. And before you go into an interview, if you go into the bathroom and just stand like this for a minute or two minutes, really is what she was saying in the TED talk it creates like this air of confidence in your mind, whether that's in your brain, it's in your whole being. So your physicality, I mean, your brain is physical, you know, it's all the energy fluxing through your brain and causing thought is physical. Electrons are physical, they're matter, you know? So changing your posture will change your personality. Sometimes I'm like, I'll just tilt my head back. I'll just lean back and like relax. And it's almost to this point of where I feel guilty. Like, ah, oh, there's other stuff I could be doing. I'm like, oh, no, just relax. It feels so good. Let yourself do it. And I'll just kind of let my, uh, my posture set. Right here. Well, I'm excited to find out more about the Brazilian uh, drug laws. How about you? It's good to hear from you guys. I genuinely mean that. It's good to hear from you. Decriminalize. Find peace.